next on Stampede. Nearing completion. We are super excited. With the cement poured this week, student government is now one step closer to finishing its sidewalk project. Find out when you'll get to use it coming up. Plus, saying goodbye. Milligan honors six retirees. We'll talk with cheer and dance coach Rhonda Paulson about her ministry move. And we say goodbye to two resident directors. And bringing awareness, panel discussions this week open up the conversation about sexual assault. And students share their stories on immigration. We wanted to put a face to this relevant issue to make people understand that, you know, it's relevant, it's in this area, it's not just the U.S. that's facing it, it's very global as well. In sports, Dalton Smith will have details on our tennis coach's 100th win. And later, Marlena Peterson takes us to a tournament that's bringing web residents together. These stories and more are coming up next. Stampede TV begins now. Student Government's Sidewalk Project is now one step closer to completion. Welcome to Stampede TV, I'm Megan Williams. And I'm Noah Parker. As Stampede TV's Caleb Perney has learned, we could start using it in just a few weeks. What was once a mud pit will soon be a new sidewalk as an SGA project reaches completion. Tuesday, crews poured the cement for the new sidewalk across the street from the library. We're just super excited to see our whole semester of planning and um, promoting the bricks and the sidewalk all coming together. They're calling this a legacy project. The SGA's executive council began thinking at the beginning of the year about planning five years in advance. President Gabe Logan says the sidewalk symbolizes what the SGA can accomplish. We were all kind of thinking, hey, we want to make sure that we do something that future SGAs and you know, um, future student bodies can look back on and say, hey, this is where the start of something. The idea for a sidewalk came after SGA received complaints from students about mud in the high traffic area. I think students will really like that they're not going to have to walk in mud now. 40 engraved bricks were sold to students and parents to raise the $4,000 needed to build the sidewalk. Those bricks are now here. The concrete has to, to set up and so we have to wait for that to happen and then uh, get the bricks in and uh, pretty much that'd be it. The original goal was to finish the sidewalk before graduation, but Guthrie says they're ahead of that schedule. The bricks were installed this afternoon. So we're just very thankful that the people that were um, willing to help us helped us and that we were able to get this uh, sidewalk poured. Caleb Perney, Stampede TV. The SGA's goals for the next five years also include promoting more recycling on campus, and they recently added a suggestion box in Durthick to receive student concerns. The music department is adding new wind and guitar ensembles next semester. Both are half credit hour classes. For the wind ensemble, the department is looking for students of all skill levels who play woodwind, brass, or percussion instruments. Rehearsals will be Tuesday nights from 6 to 7. The guitar ensemble will meet weekly as well and is intended to be fun and low pressure. They're still working out of time. Guitars and certain wind instruments will be made available to students. The ensembles require at least five students each to sign up. So we're trying to provide um, a way to kind of diversify what we have in music, especially to serve just the average music student that's not necessarily a music major, but they really like to make music or they're interested in exploring that. And college is always a really good time to do that. For more information, you can contact Hunter Mullins for Wind Ensemble and James West for Guitar Ensemble. Two campus conversations this week brought awareness to sexual assault and immigration. IJM hosted the Sexual Assault Conversation Tuesday. It's part of Sexual Assault Awareness Month. The event was a continuation of their Healthy Sexuality event last month. The conversation started with a discussion on consent and sexual misconduct from Kate Emmerich, who works in the ETSU Counseling Center. They answered student questions about sexual assault and misconduct and shared Milligan's policies surrounding the topic. We wanted to give voice to the fact that faith-based communities can engage in this conversation and we wanted to give people a, more or less like a permission to continue talking about this, that this is happening in church communities, this is happening in faith-based communities like Milligan and we are not apart from the issue, we're actually at the heart of the issue and if we start talking about it in ways that are healing and restorative and even just speaking up about it then we are able to offer a lot of healing. IJM will join with ETSU's Sexual Assault Prevention Week beginning April 16th. Vans will transport students to the event. 
The campus conversations continued on Wednesday. More than 150 people showed up for a panel discussion on immigration. The event was hosted by the SGA and IJM. The panel featured students and a professor. They shared their stories about their immigration experiences. Political science professor Amy Edmonds moderated the discussion. She shared facts about immigration and corrected some misconceptions. DACA recipient Randy Huerta helped organize the event. I feel like everyone came out of here with something new and um, you know, I hope, I hope uh, for those who don't agree, maybe it challenged their views and maybe made them think in a different way. The event concluded with a question and answer session. A club focused on international students is now working on plans for next year. Members of the international club met during lunch last week. It was a low turnout for the meeting, but club president Bradley Harvey says he's talking with about 30 people by email. Some of the plans the club discuss include a mentor program specifically for international students and family sponsors for school breaks. Mentors would help international students through the unique challenges they face. Harvey hopes to get family sponsors through professors in local churches to give international students a place to stay during school breaks. The club will also provide a place for international students to connect. Harvey says a club like this could have helped him transition into Milligan easier that time would have been a lot easier if I had a group of like-minded people. And so I thought of creating an international club as a way of people coming together because I found other missionary kids on campus, even other people from Kenya, that I hadn't even known the first two years of being at Milligan. Harvey says the club will communicate mainly by email for the rest of the semester as they finalize plans. A full launch is planned for this fall. Several Hart Hall residents are back in their rooms after a split drain pipe led to water leaking down all three floors. Maintenance crews replaced that split connector pipe within a few days after it broke. Residents say the split was discovered when water leaked from a third floor bathroom into the rooms on the second and first floors. Ken Broyles with the physical plant says the connector likely split due to old age. It took a few days to repair since parts needed to be ordered. The students affected were offered another room in Hart until they were able to use their bathrooms again. It was handled very quickly, which I'm really appreciative for, because it was stressful. Repair work is now complete. Broyles said they just need to repaint the ceiling. He says a similar thing happened in another room last year. It was also quickly fixed. Faculty and staff came together last week to celebrate those who will be retiring at the end of this semester. Milligan will lose six members of faculty and staff due to retirement. Those retiring include Kevin Harkey, Charlene Thomas, Helen Bowman, Vicki Sitter, Diane Junker, and Sue Skidmore. Skidmore says she has enjoyed her time here. Favorite part is meeting with students. Always has been. I love to do a worksheet. I just met with a student just right before you came in. And um, she and I were working out, could she do a double major? Could she finish it by this time next year? And I think that is a good possibility. So it's just fun to explore things like that with students. The retirees say they are thankful for their time that they got to spend at Milligan and say they are looking forward to retirement. Two resident directors are also leaving at the end of the semester. Brandon Jones has been the RD at Webb for three years, and Corey Carpenter has been the Sutton RD for five years. Carpenter says she has loved getting to know the students and invest in them. She and her husband will be traveling to the University of Oregon to work with a student ministry there. After being a part of the Milligan community for eight years, Jones says he is ready to move on. While he is sad about leaving the Milligan community behind, he says he's looking forward to investing in other communities. He also plans to hike the Appalachian Trail with his wife. Uh, I'm really going to miss uh, my RAs a lot. I'm really going to miss just the uh, community of web where you can walk down a hallway and just meet someone new because their door is open. Um, they're playing loud music and instead of yelling at them, you just party with them, you know, and that's, I love that aspect of Milligan, uh, of, of Webb specifically, so. The theater department's spring play was a hit. Rabbit Hole is a two-act play about a family experiencing grief after the loss of a child. The family begins to cope, recover, and mourn over the course of the play. They face a lot of conflict with each other in the process. Senior Kristen Branch played Becca. She says the play was a good end to her Milligan theater experience. It was one that we haven't done in a while, like the style. We've been doing a lot of comedies in the past, and this was, I think it was a piece that needed to be done by the theater department. It was a more serious piece, a more contemporary piece too. We haven't done a lot of contemporary, so I thought it was a great experience, and I'm really thankful that I got a chance to be a part of it. 
Now the theater department is getting ready for the festival of one-act plays coming at the end of the month. The gotcha tournament is almost here after several delays. It's a water gun fight that takes place over the entire campus. This year's tournament has been postponed several times, but campus activities director Jason Onks hopes it will start soon. It was originally postponed due to low participation and then because of Wonderful Wednesday. Gotcha is a game of elimination where when you sign up you receive a random name and your goal is to go and squirt them with your water gun um, and eliminate them and then you receive a new name and then you eliminate them until it gets down to the last person. Onk sent out another email Tuesday seeking signups. The tournament is expected to begin next week. The most recent print edition of the Stampede features an ad for a story we had planned to do on a campus gun debate. That debate has been postponed. We'll stay in touch with the campus Republican and Democrats clubs. We hope to bring you more information once the event is rescheduled. After the break, we'll sit down with Rhonda Paulson to talk about her move from Milligan to Ministry. And later, celebrating a milestone in sports. We have details on Ryan Reynolds' 100th win. More Stampede is after this. Johnson City Bakery, located on Main Street near Mid-City Grill and the Farmer's Market. We have brownies, board games, and local honey. Open Friday and Saturday, 10 until 9. Two national championships in one year. It was the first time it had ever happened before. It was kind of one of those surreal moments, like you, at the time, you don't really realize, you know, the, the magnitude of what you've done. When one person has an accomplishment, we all celebrate. Because we're in this together. We are Stampede TV, Milligan's student-operated news source. Today I'm joined by cheer and dance coach Rhonda Paulson, who's announced she'll be leaving Milligan this month. Thanks for joining us today, Rhonda. You're welcome. So we all heard the news that you were leaving this month. So what's the reason that you're leaving? Um, it wasn't an easy decision. Um, I have loved my job here at Milligan. I've been doing this job for 13 years. Um, but my husband and I recently started a nonprofit to benefit children transitioning into foster care. And it's kind of blown up and kind of taken over. And I found myself doing two full-time jobs and raising four children and something had to go. And unfortunately, I just feel like God's calling me um, to this new ministry opportunity. So what are your plans for Isaiah 117 House when you leave? Um, well, the immediate plans is we hope to open our doors um, for the first Isaiah 117 house. It'll be located in Carter County. We hope to open in June. Um, Long-term plans, we hope to open a location in every county in the state of Tennessee. Um, within the next two years, hoping to open a Washington County location and then a Sullivan County location and just start kind of chipping away at the state. Now, your time here at Milligan, I'm pretty sure that a lot of people are going to be sad that you're leaving. Has anyone come up to you and expressed that they're oh. happy for you and everything like that? There's been lots of kind, kind words, lots of lots of tears already. Um, I'm sure I will cry again. And my husband was like, if you're crying, maybe you're not supposed to leave. And it's just a testament to what a great place this is and a great place to work and the family and the community that develops here. You know that as a student. It's true also as faculty and staff. And so after 13 years and to have this many good friendships. And then, of course, I have loved being the cheer and dance coach. I've loved my girls. And so it's not an easy transition, but I do feel it's what God is calling me to do. Now, for Isaiah 117 House, how long has that been going on? When did you start that? And did you expect it to be as big of a deal as it is right no, now? No, I mean, it has far exceeded any of our expectations. Um, my husband and I started our foster care journey in 2014. And over the past, you know, four years, we've seen the need. Um, and so in 2017, I actually Googled how to start a nonprofit because I tell everyone that if you want God to have the glory, then you put someone totally ill-equipped in charge. And so I knew nothing about starting a nonprofit. I, I knew nothing about fundraising, uh, marketing, social media. I'd never been on social media, <laughs> never had a Facebook account. Um, and so January of 2017, we just kind of started the process. Process. Um, and in February, we had our first board meeting. And in August, August 4th of 2017, we had our fundraising kickoff to raise $75,000. And everyone told us we couldn't do it. We couldn't do it in Carter County, but God had other plans. And by August 30th, we had $75,000 to purchase our first location. 
Now, since you're leaving, who, have they hired anybody to take your place yet? They have. Um, she's great. Her name is Chelsea Woodacre. Um, she cheered at ETSU. She also coached at ETSU. Um, she was also coaching during the time that they were developing their dance program, which I think is key since we work together, our cheer and dance programs work together. She also coached at Science Hill. And Kenzie King, one of my senior cheerleaders, I actually recruited Kenzie while she was cheering under Chelsea Woodacre. Um, she knows her stuff. She's great. Um, she's excited about uh, becoming the cheer and dance coach. I think she's going to do a fabulous job. Now, do the girls on the team, have they met her yet? Do they like her so far? Um, everyone's a little apprehensive. You know, I mean, it's just new. It's just new. It's different. Um, but I think once they meet her, all those, you know, apprehensions will just go out the window. Um, she will actually start on April 16th and we will work together April 16th through the 27th. And then my last official day is April 27th. So during that time, we plan on scheduling lunch meetings. She'll meet with all the seniors, then all the juniors, then all the sophomores, um, and all the freshmen And it. Instead of meeting everybody at once, I think that'll be easier so they can actually sit down with her and ask questions and get to know her. And I think they're going to love her. She's awesome. Are you two hoping to accomplish anything in the time that both of you will be working together? Or you just kind of let her take off and do her own No, thing? I've kind of got the two weeks planned out. I mean, I want to take her on campus. I want her to meet, you know, key people that she'll be working with. She needs to meet Tony Jones, Heather Jackson. Um, she needs to meet the team, registrar. Um, you know, training her on paperwork. We're gonna get camp clothes ordered, camp organized. I wanna make sure that I can help her start off on the best foot possible, so. Thank you so much for joining us today, Rhonda. It's been a pleasure being able to meet with you. Well, thanks for asking, thank you. The latest in national world news coming up later. And later in sports, Dalton Smith has the details on the tennis coach's 100th win. Stay tuned. Hammocks, they're one of our favorite pastimes. Student leaders promise new mounts behind dorms to make things even easier. It's going to allow for hopefully 14 hammocks. But when a year passed with no mounts, we asked why. The hammock mounts that had not been installed a year after the plane was announced. Those interview requests were declined. The very next morning, those mounts were installed. We stuck with the story until the very end. Because we are in this together. We are Stampede TV, Milligan Student Operated News Source. Oh, Dapper Leon. <laughs> I almost feel like every Friday I have a date, he'll have a vest or a jacket. She sees me at my best. <laughs> Drop off a warm meal and get more than you expect. Volunteer at americaletsdolunch.org. President Trump has announced he plans to send National Guard troops to guard the border with Mexico. It's something both former presidents George W. Bush and Barack Obama also did. Trump hopes adding troops will help enforce immigration law until his promised border wall is built. It's been a long-standing talking point and promise from his campaign. And on Wednesday, the White House announced the next step in President Trump's plan to shore up the southern border. The president has directed that the Department of Defense and the Department of Homeland Security work together with our governors to deploy the National Guard to our southwest border to assist the Border Patrol. The announcement comes after the president's disgust with what he calls the country's weak immigration policies and lack of funding for a border wall dominated his tweets this week. On Tuesday, the president told reporters he was looking at a military option to stop a migrant caravan headed to the U.S. from the south. Until we can have a wall and proper security, we're going to be guarding our border with the military. Troops could be deployed almost immediately. The National Guard understands the urgency and the request, so we will do it as expeditiously as possible. Trump is not the first president to send the National Guard to help at the border. Former Presidents Barack Obama and George W. Bush both deployed guardsmen. Both had those decisions criticized, since according to U.S. law, troops cannot actually participate in immigration enforcement. Instead, they're limited to support roles like construction and intelligence. I'm Mary Maloney reporting. It's now been 50 years since the civil rights leader Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated. Milligan joined people around the country remembering King by ringing the Seeger Bell Tower 39 times. A bell tolls at the National Civil Rights Museum marking the time of Martin Luther King's death. 
around the country and the world, bells chime 39 times. Each ring symbolizes one year Dr. King spent on Earth. It's been 50 years since the civil rights icon was gunned down in front of a Memphis motel. I've been blessed by God to come back here 50 years later. And every time the scab comes off, the sore is still raw. The blood still oozes. This is the site of the crucifixion. But not far from here is the resurrection, the new hope, and the new possibilities. In Washington, a wreath was placed at his memorial near the National Mall. Nearby, people marched, using his words as their message. I've been to 152 countries. I've never been anywhere where people have wanted to ask me about Martin Luther King. The world lost an icon, but his legacy lives. And now more than ever before, we need his teachings, his principles, his steps of nonviolence. In Memphis, Tennessee, I'm Omar Jimenez. Facebook says its data leak affected more people than previously thought. They say Cambridge Analytica may have gotten information on 87 million users without their knowledge, not 50 million. Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg will testify before Congress about the data breach next week. Cambridge Analytica accessed the information to conduct voter targeting. Beginning next week, Facebook says it will tell people if their information was shared. Teachers in Oklahoma are continuing their push for more school funding, but state lawmakers say they've given enough after signing a pay raise into law this week. Dozens of teachers and students are marching from Tulsa to Oklahoma City. The purpose of this 110-mile hike? To demand more money for schools. This is just another example of the way in which folks are coming together to make their voices heard. It's, it's advocacy. The National Education Association says the Sooner State is 49th in the nation for teacher pay. But teachers say this standoff isn't just about salaries. Some have posted pictures of things like moldy school walls, cracked floors, as well as tattered textbooks and battered chairs. They say major improvements are needed overall. We have to make public education what it needs to be. On Wednesday, the Oklahoma House of Representatives voted to tax Amazon sales from third-party vendors. If it becomes law, the measure could add $20 million a year to the state's education fund. This comes days after Governor Mary Fallon signed a bill that gives teachers an average raise of just over $6,000. But the teachers' union said it wasn't enough. Fallon responded, telling CBS News, this is like having a teenage kid that wants a better car. That comment led to some angry responses on social media. Meanwhile, the teachers keep heading down Route 66. Education and children are the future. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Dalton Smith joins us now with sports. He has details on a landmark win for the tennis coach. After the break, I'll talk with Coach Ryan Reynolds. Sports is next. I used to think news is news. It's all the same, but it's not. There's a big difference between local broadcast news and cable news. See, local stations are part of my community, connecting me to local news, weather, and sports on every device. It makes sense. Get the news from the people I trust who actually live here. No agenda, no bias like on cable, shout shows, or social media. Just facts. For news I can trust, I stay local. Support your local stations. Text TV to 52886 today. A shooting on campus is something we hope will never happen. But it seems to be happening more and more often. We asked questions and discovered what you should do if it ever occurs here. You could have 22 city officers in that vicinity within 10 minutes. Now guidelines are posted in every building. It's potentially life-saving information because we're in this together. We're Stampede TV, Milligan student-operated news source. Ryan Reynolds has been the coach of Milligan men's and women's tennis teams for eight full seasons. This year, he was able to grab his 100th win as the coach of the women's tennis team. Milligan has played a very difficult schedule while Reynolds has been the coach here. Despite that, he has totaled 100 wins as a head of the women's team. He is very happy to have received his 100th win, and he looks forward to continuing to better his teams. It's kind of amazing that 100 wins is kind of blown by. This has been, it feels like I, I just started, but in um, not even through my eighth year and we've got, we've got a hundred wins. So that's, that feels good. I've been really fortunate to have so many good, good players and good teams over the years. And um, 
it's been it's been a great experience. The women's team will play its last game at home on April 7th before the start of the conference tournament. Intramural basketball is now in full swing with a total of seven teams competing. Milligan puts on an intramural basketball league each year. There are a variety of different athletes competing this current year. The range of different athletes include those from sports such as the golf, swim, soccer, basketball, and volleyball teams. Many people have come together to play and compete in the intramurals to see who is the best. Intramurals will continue until April 22nd. And now, here are the latest scores from other games this week. Softball won a doubleheader over Bluefield Tuesday 5-3 and 9-3. The baseball team won over Bryan College in a doubleheader Saturday 6-2 and 5-4. The men's tennis team lost to SCAD Atlanta 4-5. And the women's tennis team lost 1-8. And that's what's going on in sports. Thanks, Dalton. After the break, Marlena Peterson takes us to a video game tournament students are playing in Webb Hall. More Stampede is after this. Graduation. It's one of the biggest moments for each of us. But overcrowding meant that we could no longer have just one ceremony. For some, this meant sharing the event with your entire family. For others, splitting up this community. I know it's not what expected and change is hard, but like, we like, had this idea we would all matriculate together and we would all graduate together. We provided you with a voice on an important issue because we're in this together. We are Stampede TV, Milligan's student-operated news source. Chiru has no choice. She and millions like her walk miles a day for dirty water. But together we can end their walk by providing clean water close by. Instead of spending hours walking to get water that makes them sick, girls can be in a classroom and moms will gain back time to care for their families. Sons and daughters can grow up strong, finally free of sicknesses. It's true. When you just add water, you change a life. Learn more at worldvision.org. You are watching Noah Parker and Megan Williams. Dalton Smith with sports and the rest of the Stampede TV team. Campus Activities is now taking sign-ups for this year's Mr. Buff competition. The male pageant is set for April 13th at 7 in the Gregory Center. Rehearsals are next week. If you want to enter, email Jason Ox or Samong Lee. Proceeds go to that big party in the senior banquet. Video games are favorite pastime for many at Milligan. Stampede TV's Marlena Peterson takes us to Webb Hall where they are coming together for a NBA 2K League. Webb Hall, as of this semester, has an NBA 2K league that takes place just about every day. Daniel Robinson started this league with a few of his friends, and it's a pretty big deal in Webb. So um, last, last semester, me and Zach Leslie would play 2K every Wednesday night because that was like the big NBA night. And towards the end of the semester, a lot of people would come in and watch. And so we kind of figured, how can we make this something that everyone's kind of participating in. And so we were like, well, what if we did like a semester long league really? And, and we talked to a bunch of guys who we thought would be interested. And uh, we started it up first week, of, first week of second semester. We drafted our teams and put together a schedule and we're in the last week of the regular season now. The league currently has 14 people participating, but Daniel says he hopes to expand that in the upcoming semester. Although next year we kind of want to bump that up to 16, but as of now, 14. 2K gives these guys a chance to play as some of their favorite athletes playing in the real NBA league. But even though it's just a game, some of these players take this friendly competition somewhat seriously. Yeah, I enjoy playing in the league when I'm winning. I don't really like losing very much, and it's, uh, it's frustrating at times because I'm terrible. With the semester ending and the new semester approaching, the competition will surely grow as more people take the challenge to enjoy the game. Marlena Peterson, reporting for Stampede TV. And that's all for this edition of Stampede TV. For the latest news information, visit us online at milliganstampede.com. Or check us out on social media. More news is available in the print edition of the Stampede and Newsstands on campus. Thanks for watching. I'm Noah Parker. And I'm Megan Williams. Join us again for our next newscast on April 20th. Have a great rest of your day.